ladies and gentlemen of McCormick's. Thank you for sticking around. How are you doing tonight? Like I said earlier. Yes, exactly as I said earlier. We're going to get this show going, but uh, before we start, uh, just I want to give a shout out to Austin, your bartender. He's working by himself. Yeah. Working very hard to bring you drinks. And uh, I'll reiterate this again, 725 pitchers. 775. For... What? 775. I was off 50 cents. Fuck it. Sorry. 775 pitchers of a very tasty cream ale I had earlier. It's delicious. There's also 350 shooters. They got the list over there. With that being said, you ready to have a good night? Yeah. Yes! Yes! I'm going to bring up your host and MC for the evening. He's the very funny, very good friend of mine, the lovely, the extremely violently cuddly, David C. Wakefield! Yay! Jesse Jarvis! He's cuddly too, but not in a violent way. How are we doing, everybody? Good. Yeah? Thank you for coming out to uh, McCormick's for the open mic night. We're going to have a good fucking time tonight. If we get 100 people here, uh, Andrew Pauly will be running around the bottom in his underwear, so that'll be something we're going to hope for. Uh, we should count. We should keep count. Anybody here on a date? Good. That's a good. That's very good. That's what, I'm, that's what I was going for there. Absolute complete silence. And if you were on a date, then I would feel very sorry for you, but that's, that's how we're rolling tonight. Here's the thing, uh, ladies, um, don't ever believe any guy who says he's a fan of history, okay? Guys are not fans of history. Guys are fans of violence, that's it. That's it, fucking deep fried beer battered violence with a side of ranch dressing, that's it. And when a guy says he likes history, he just means he likes violence within a particular time period. Seriously, think about it. What kind of history do guys like? They'll tell you like World War II, Civil War, some other sort of war. Yeah, there's no guy sitting around going, fucking A right, dude, Age of Enlightenment, yeah. <laughs> Woo, that movie is not coming on Spike TV, okay? Voltaire, the Invincible. No, that's not, that's not happening. The first rule of enlightenment is you do not talk about enlightenment. <laughs> Age of Enlightenment 2, The Wrath of Kant. <laughs> Kant! By the way, that word was Kant. Kant. Emmanuel Kant. Wikipedia, that shit. It's not the other word. I want to see that new movie about the assassin, the highly, highly trained assassin. You know that movie? That's every fucking movie that's out now. The highly, and it's not just the, it's the highly trained assassin. Oh my God, let's make a movie about an assassin. Every job, every movie now is about an assassin. What I want to see, I want to see an assassin movie, but I want the assassin to be like, you know, it's Ron, the assassin. You know, he graduated kind of somewhere in the middle of school with assassin school, you know. Maybe he didn't even go to assassin school. Maybe he went to like Phoenix Online. <laughs> Or you can study the assassin arts. And, you know, that's... I don't know, that's the movie I want to see. There's no joke there, I just want to see that movie. He's, he's an okay assassin. He's, you know... And it's not all he does, too. He'll do assassin, and then he'll go work at Starbucks. That's... It's kind of the assassin school. And uh, in keeping with that, I was watching... Uh, this is so funny. I was watching uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the other day. Oh, yeah. Right, a classic. Fuck yeah. And uh, my wife wanders into the room. Now, she's never seen it, never even heard of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, it's a long story. She's not from around here. <laughs> so she wanders in, and she's sitting there for about 30 minutes, and she's watching the movie, right? And then she goes, wait a second, wait a second. You're trying to tell me that the father is a talking rat who knows kung fu. I'm like, okay, first of all, it's karate. Second of all, he's their adopted father. Number three, that's the fucking problem you have with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, you know, you can buy into the fact that they're walking, talking, upright turtles who do martial arts and have a thing for pizza, but you're saying no to the adopted father being a rat. That's, that's where you're drawing the line, really? That's the problem you have? Fuck that. That's bullshit. You gotta watch that shit and recognize. It's fucking Master Splinter you're talking about. Ha! Yeah, all right. Anybody watch uh, Celebrity Apprentice this season? Yes. One person. 
two people, that's awesome. Well, then you will know three people, thank you. We'll do this shit one at a time, that's when we'll just count it up. You will know then that I have a new, I have a new hero. Move over, Batman. It's all about Busey. Busey is my motherfucker. Busey be thy name, that's what I'm saying. This guy, because you know what he does, people. If you don't know what he does, this is what Busey does. This is the magic of Gary Busey. Because if you don't know what happened, uh, he was riding his motorcycle, fell off, hit his head, cracked his head open without a helmet. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Nah, I'm not going to talk about it. We'll see him later. Well, Busey cracked his head open. Now what Busey does, with well, the beauty of Gary Busey, he takes any word and he has an acronym for it. They're just like, Gary, you're on my team. Team, together everyone achieves more. <laughs> Gary, we're gonna make art, art a righteous truth. <laughs> so I'm thinking, how the hell did he come up with this? Did he just go to the dictionary and start at the beginning? Art of art, any animal reaping divine value against real knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, go look in the encyclopedia. Encyclopedia, engage in new concepts you can learn and perfect every day in America. <laughs> Weird. Leave you with this. I ran into a friend of mine from high school the other day, and he goes, uh, he leaves me, he goes, you know, you don't party like you used to. And I'm like, you know what, I don't party like I used to. This isn't high school, okay? If I want to have a party, I don't have to wait till mom and dad go out of town. Just my wife. But I know if I do have a party, I know who's going to be there. Because you know, as well as I know, the same people come to every party. Like, I know if I have a party, I know a frustrated guitar player is showing up. <laughs> oh, you know frustrated guitar, but he doesn't own a guitar. And he didn't bring a guitar, but he's going to find the guitar in the house. And he's going to play the only two songs he knows all night fucking long. Dude, we get it. Jane says, we know. <laughs> fucking hey, Jane's been saying that shit for three hours. Tell Jane to shut up. Then there's going to be the guy who spends half the night trying to get your dog high. You know that guy. Then he has that creepy laugh. <laughs> but you know it's not a party without the guy who's going to pick a fight. That guy's at every party. What? Huh? What'd you say? What'd you say? What'd you say? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? I knew a guy like that. Turned out he was actually deaf. <laughs> I saw anything better in my head, I'll be honest with you. That's, uh, that one ended better. Okay, well, I'll get off on this one. Before I bring up your next comic, just to let you know, here's a quick thing. Uh, if you worship Buddha, you're a Buddhist, right? If you're into the hobbies, you're a hobbyist. So does that make NASCAR fans racist? You guys ready for your next comic? Yeah! All right, I've seen this guy here in Richmond. I've also seen him in D.C. Very, very funny kid. Give it up for Chris Anders! Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay. Um, I did something uh, new the other day. I sold my blood for gas money. It, it was like it was with uh, a blood bank, uh, not like just some guy who was buying blood at the gas stations. Uh, but I, like if I if they had little comment cards to fill out at the plasma care center. Uh, I would write, please don't show Paul Blart to people who uh, have been sitting in like line to give blood all day during the weekdays and obviously don't have any other job. And I mean, you can't sink any lower. And I, I know that's not a good way to start a set, but uh, it was a really sad experience for me and I'd like a job. Um, uh, I... I went on a trip to Turkey last uh, month, and uh, half the trip was on a cruise. It was a boost cruise. Like uh, most of the money they make is from uh, people getting really drunk and buying expensive drinks. And I learned that uh, an Irish coffee isn't uh, a coffee with a potato in it. <laughs> it's a coffee with whiskey and a potato in it. Uh, I also learned that my dad's kind of, uh, my dad's like 64, 
and he's kind of mixing up words. Uh, and there's only two channels on the cruise uh, that were in English, and there's BBC and uh, Fashion TV, so we're switching back and forth, and uh, my dad saw like the fashion people, ladies, on the runway, and uh, he just said, oh my, how thin, Auschwitz. And I think, I think he meant to say oy vey, but that was like the worst mix-up ever, and you can't... The, I'm just glad he, like, he didn't uh, do it any other times on the cruise, like, uh, or, or during the trip in general, because like, during the cruise uh, there was an awful meal. It was like, oh, I'll be feeling this tomorrow, Hiroshima. Uh, <laughs> our hotel got booked up. Uh, oh my god, I can't believe they overbooked this hotel. Rwanda. <laughs> I, uh, I love PI and uh, detective novels. I love uh, going to secondhand bookstores and like searching for them. You know, like an added bonus, I'll like get all in character and get a trench coat, like a respectable one, not like now when trench coats are only used for people who want to be naked under them. But like I'll, I'll get the whole thing going on. I'll, I'll call like a. Uh, People work in there, or the ladies work in there, dames, and then I'll apologize for calling them dames. And uh, I, I ended up sleuthing out this one book that's called uh, A Mystery That's Suspenseful. <laughs> and tagline, you do not know the ending. And uh, I thought that was the best title for any book. It was from like the 1940s. Turns out, uh, the butler did it, spoiler, but it's a convention of butlers. Like, there's multiple butlers, so you don't know, and I'm like on the edge of my seat every minute that I'm reading this, and I'm trying to like, sawing off the edge of my seat, but then like, my chair is just shorter, and there's still an edge of my seat, and I'm still really excited, and, oh my god, how I do this, man. I, uh... I was on Amazon. All, all these are new jokes, and I, I'm trying to like tell true stories here, except for that Irish potato one. Um, I was on, uh, I was like deep in the Amazon.com, and uh, I was uh, perusing uh, uh, autobiographies, and one that caught my attention was Mark Twain's uh, volume one of the autobiography, which was just published this year, and uh, I saw in the comments. There was a guy under the username of No Twain No Gain uh, <laughs> who remarked, "Ugh, this is a piece of garbage. I love Twain as much as the next guy, but he is so self-centered in this autobiography." Which I thought was funny after thinking about it for more than two seconds. <laughs> um, um, that's actually what I got. What I got for you guys tonight, and uh, I'm out of time. But you guys have been great. Thanks for letting me talk to you today. Chris Andrews. Chris, are you still dropped out of college? Yes. Oh, boy. I didn't have anything for that. I just wanted to say that I dropped out of college. I didn't mean to put your business out there on the street. I don't know why I didn't ask you in private. That's my fault. That's on me. I'm so sorry. Well, good luck to you. Okay. You guys ready for your next comic? I have no idea where the name of that came from. Wait. All right, big round of applause for Tony Fleece. Good evening, folks. How y'all doing? Good. Uh, uh, you guys have to excuse me, I'm a little nervous, uh, second time doing this. Uh, reminds me of first time having sex, uh, except for this time actually be a good thing to have people laugh at me. <laughs> the other day I was coming home from work. Um, I was listening to Ellie in the morning, unlike you folks, I actually go to work late at night and come home early in the morning. But nonetheless, um, they're talking about this guy who made his own perfume. I made like 70 bottles of it, and um, some 75 bucks a pop made from the essence of his own excrement. And I'm not lying, look it up. But it just made me think to myself, does this make him a shitty businessman? 
Oh, man. Well, I don't know if you watch a lot of TV as I do, but um, infomercials. Gotta love them. My favorite has to be the shake weight, because, you know, I'm just sitting there thinking and wondering, who comes up with these things? One or two scenarios come to mind. Either A, fat, balding guy sitting at home, having to jerk it on. If you're a guy, you've done it. Don't lie to yourselves. We all been there. And he's just sitting there, just going to town all day, and then, you know, you start you know, realizing, man, I'm starting to break a sweat. My arms are nice and tone. That or just, um, you know, porn star just sitting there, you know, just grabbing two guys and going to town at it. And, you know, our friends are just, you know, saying, man, your arms are nice and tone. Like, yeah, how'd you do it? Well, it's pretty simple. You just grab two guys and just start striking. Um, but, oh, yeah, recently I just uh, changed jobs. I started uh, working in the call center, I worked in the bank, and um, I remember my very first phone call. Um, I'm nervous as hell, just like now, but my first phone call comes in, screen pops up, and we have notes on all of it. So if you're an asshole, you got notes on it. Um, but nonetheless, I had notes, woman will cuss you out over XYZ, and I'm just like, oh God, I've got to deal with this woman. Oh. Uh, so she proceeds to cuss me out and whatnot. She actually calms down during the phone call. And um, I work particularly in the online department. So, you know, you screw up on your password, I'm the guy you end up talking to. But nonetheless, I have to go send out an email to her. And, you know, I have to ask for her email address. Um, and she's giving me her email address. And, you know, um, she'll be like D as a David, T as a Tom, O as an orgasm. I'm just in shock, I'm like, wow, you just said O is an orgasm. You couldn't come up with anything else but orgasm. Um, so, uh, I get off about an hour, what are you doing? That's the only thing I could really come up with there. Um, so, moving on down the line. Now, there's an issue that um, I think that all we can collectively take care of. Um, and that is breast cancer. We can all take in something to help out all the ladies out in the world that, you know, just as prevention. And I've come with this slogan and a campaign for this, and um, I call it Group for Hope. So pretty much just you walk down the street, see a pair of breasts, and you just grab one, just to make sure. And you're like, oh, sorry, but you got a lump. You better go see a doctor. Anybody in here um, ever dated women with kids or men with kids? Yes, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad of a deal, especially my age, kind of happy. I mean, I'm gonna have kids. Um, yeah, but one Sunday morning, um, women have the super hearing, in case you did not know, particularly when they become mothers. And, um, you know, it's one Sunday morning, you know, we're downstairs and, you know, we're feeling a little frisky. And, you know, we're going to town and whatnot, and out of nowhere, she's like, I hear the baby. I'm like, what? And before I can mutter another word, she darts down the hall into her office, and I'm sitting there, just like, what the fuck's going on? I don't know what, man. I'm like, uh, how do I get dressed? And I turn around, all I see is the kid as I'm grabbing a pillow and covering myself. And then she comes out of the side, all dressed, nice and neat. How the hell she did it so fast, I do not know. And she comes to pick up the kid, the kid just, you know, whispers to her, I saw Tony naked, but don't tell him. The kids are funny like that. Um, she tells her mom not to tell anybody she saw me naked. But what does she do in exchange? She goes to her grandma. First thing, I saw Tony naked. But, thank you guys. Um, it was great. Thank you. Tony, please.